Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Well, as you can see, I made a bit of a mess. Yep, that's looking quite artistic. Point-to-point -point wiring. Well, what this is, this is a prototype, and uh, this is a Class A amplifier. Uh, you can find this on the internet, just uh, Google for it. Uh, it's based on a, on a 2SK1058 MOSFET. There we have the circuit. Amazingly simple, that is. Well, now, my uh, circuit that I have right here is not built with that certain MOSFET. It is built with one of these. Um, that is an IRFP150N. They're both N-channel power MOSFETs, obviously. Um, this one will take a bit more uh, voltage. This one will take a bit more current. Uh, but all in all, they are pretty pretty similar. Um, so, um, it was a bit of a <laughs> it was a bit of a mess, I have to say. Uh, first of all, uh, the uh, the connections on the two MOSFETs are not the same. Uh, the, um, the drain and the source are reversed. The connections are reversed. So, at first, when I built the circuit without this uh, data sheet, uh, it wouldn't work, obviously. Um, it wouldn't do anything. It, uh, it was basically just a short across the MOSFET. Uh, whenever I measured it, uh, I was uh, I was getting 0 0.7 volts, and uh, obviously that was the voltage across that uh, diode right there, that little protection diode. Um, so anyway, I redid that all. Uh, then the next problem, and uh, this is actually getting a bit embarrassing, um, these little capacitors. Now you can see one right there. I'm not sure. Not sure how good this camera's macro is. Well, it seems to be pretty good. So you can see this one is uh, has been popped. That thing is dead. Uh, same goes for that capacitor down there. As you can see, they are both disconnected. I haven't taken them out because uh, I really can't reach them anymore. Anyway, what went wrong? Um, I powered up the unit and uh, they both... Uh, popped and uh, I was like what on earth because I did use some uh, some tantalum capacitors uh, that are rated for uh, 35 volts they're both rated for that voltage well I finally realized uh, tantalum capacitors are polarized and I had them in the wrong way so anyway replace that one right there with a normal ceramic capacitor that one doesn't matter that's just for good sound quality uh, anyway um, now uh, the other problem and that is the main reason why this is uh, this is really just a prototype you cannot use it at a regular basis uh, this uh, of course, Class A, extremely, extremely, extremely inefficient. Um, I don't have enough space on my SD card to make this a very long video explaining all of that. Um, but basically, um, it does need this uh, resistor, this um, right there, 15 ohms, 40 watts. Oh, yes. 40 watts and from what that guy who made the circuit wrote uh, in idle mode with no signal present that resistor is going to burn around 30 watts so as you can see these two now these are both 33 ohm resistors hooked up in parallel for 15 ohms um, but as you can see now resistors in parallel means that uh, the load is uh, distributed around equally so each one of these would have to be 20 watts in order to meet the uh, specification but as you can see these are pretty far away from being 20 watts the small one might be uh, 5 watts so I really can't run this thing for very long also the MOSFET gets extremely hot you definitely also the prototype you definitely always want to go with a uh, with a heatsink 
and uh, for regular use uh, this thing's actually too small. Uh, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, demonstrate this thing. Um, now, interesting behavior, very interesting behavior in fact, uh, it actually <laughs> it actually has some kind of um, when you turn it on it kind of starts oscillating and then finally uh, goes into uh, usual operating mode now I have the signal generator turned on uh, that is set to around 400 Hertz if I turn on the power supply watch the ammeter what that thing is doing you will be able to hear the tone as well as soon as the uh, as soon as the amplifier has stabilized. So let's turn it on and uh, have a look at that. It is running on uh, 24 volts. <laughs> Isn't that a strange thing? And you can see it on the oscilloscope too. I got that hooked up as well. We just uh, turn it off again and uh, just watch it. Watch what that thing is doing. That is so strange. But anyway, it is working, as you can see. And um, we have this potentiometer right here sets the bias. You do want to have 12 volts on the drain. That's what this potentiometer is for. This is the volume right there. One minute left on the SD card. I now have some music ready to go. In a previous take I still had this test speaker hooked up, but I noticed this thing sounds very good. So, hooked up a much better speaker. Uh, this one right there, no name, with Pioneer drivers inside of it, from the 70s. This amplifier isn't very powerful, but um, still, let's turn it on and play some music. Here we go. That's enough of that. I don't want to get into copyright problems. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this thing, although it's not very powerful, it does sound very good. So I will be building this. Thanks for watching.